Hey guys, I had a message on Instagram from Lorenzo uh, a couple of days ago, and he had a really interesting thread going on Reddit. Let me read this message from Lorenzo, and let's talk about whether Steve Reeves was natural or not. That's the conversation that's going on in this Reddit uh, thread from Lorenzo. Hey, Scott, I hope you're doing well. I'm a big fan of your work. Thank you, Lorenzo. I appreciate it. I'm a huge fan of Steve Reeves. I've always been interested in how some people are convinced that Steve Reeves took steroids. And so I made a post discussing my reasons as to why I believe he was natural. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the post. Thank you for that, Lorenzo. Whether any information was inaccurate, whether you would have added other points, etc. And then there's a link to the Reddit. Now, I'll be honest, I don't go on Reddit, but I'm glad Lorenzo invited me to, and I really appreciate that. It's great when these younger guys, you know, are fans of physical culture from the golden era, uh, silver bronze era, and Steve Reeves fans. Uh, it's very, very smart to study those guys and emulate those guys. So if we go into his Reddit, Steve Reeves, natty or not, natural or not, and Lorenzo says, I didn't realize just how convinced people are about Steve Reeves having taken steroids, despite them presenting no arguments other than he looked good. Here are my reasons as to why I strongly believe he was natural. For everyone with doubts about Steve Reeves, reasons for Steve Reeves being natural. Physique. Despite having an incredible physique, it is clear that Steve had a genetically superhuman structure from young. Yes, that is true. The only changes in his shape over the years come from the amount of muscle mass he has. Comparing his physique at 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, when he won Mr. America, he quite obviously just gets more mature and developed with age without showing any drastic changes. Where exactly during this timeline did he start taking steroids? Who else have you ever seen with a frame like that at 15 years old? We see a similar story when comparing his body in his youth to that in later years at 32 and 43. So well, let's see, here's 43. There's 32 when he did Hercules. And there's 43 in A Long Ride from Hell. When you look at his physique here, this is me talking now, Scott, not Lorenzo. When you look at his physique at 43, it looks a lot like his teenage physique. Obviously, there's muscle maturity, but, you know, it's obvious he's not using steroids. Um, when he was younger, you never saw any acne. You never saw any red cheeks, you know, things like that from high blood pressure, because that's what Certain steroids will do, cause your blood pressure to go sky high. You never heard about roid rage from Steve Reeves. I don't think roid rage, if you were to ask those guys on Muscle Beach back in the 50s about roid rage, they would have been like, what? What, what in the world is that? They wouldn't have heard that term. I'm, I'm fairly certain that that is accurate. So there he is at 43. Additionally, Steve's physique shows nothing to suggest any steroid use, no disproportion, normal body fat levels, no bloated muscles or torso. The only reason people suggest he was on steroids is because he looked so good. That's true. Uh, you know, people say things like, well, I could do that too if I worked out all day. Um, well, you know, when COVID came, just get off topic for a minute, and we had the, you know, people working from home. Everything was pretty much shut down. Did people use that time to work out at home? No, they didn't. In fact, I think they used that time to eat more 
and get fatter. That's my opinion. So, you know, that's just a way, whenever you stick your neck above the crowd, you're going to have people that don't like that, and they're going to try to chop it off. Well, that's okay. You guys be yourself. You're going to be much happier. You're going to live a much more fulfilled, carefree, stressful life. Don't worry about what people think. Just do your own thing. And I can assure you, as I turn 60 this year, that philosophy has served me very well. And, you know, I had mentors that have taught me that. And I understand when you're younger, it takes time. When I was younger, I was a huge fan of Dorian Yates. Well, when you grow up, you become a Steve Reeves fan because you realize that it's just not sustainable. And even Dorian Yates, you know, doesn't look like that anymore. Now he's all about cardio. He rides a bike. He walks. He does yoga. And, you know, he's obviously changed his mindset. Same with Ronnie Coleman. You know, I love Ronnie Coleman, but he's getting around on crutches and in a wheelchair now. Look at Steve Reeves at the picture I just showed you at age 43. Wouldn't you rather look like that? And even when he was in his 50s, you know, he was riding his bike and, you know, he was doing leg presses with 200 pounds for a thousand reps. And I think it was like 44 minutes. So he had functional strength his whole life until his last days and that is the kind of lifestyle you want to emulate all right let's move on family genetics steve's father lester reeves to whom he looked identical and there his his father right there and there's his grandfather right there so Lester Reeves, to whom he looked identical, was reportedly as tall, broad, and heavy as Steve and never touched a weight. He was born in the late 1800s and died in 1926 from a farming accident when Steve was one and a half years old. Steve's grandfather, who I just showed you a picture of, was also reportedly 6'4 and 240 pounds. Well, I can assure you he didn't use steroids <laughs> back in the you know 1800s. Moreover, Steve was of German, Irish, English, and Walsh descent, giving him broad gene pools. Military service. Serving for one and a half years in the Army from around the age of 19, Steve was stationed in the Philippines and in Japan during World War II, making it impossible for him to have access to steroids uh, during this period. His generals, his officers, were amazed by his physique, nicknaming him The Shape, and suggested he teach physical training for the other troops as well. At that time, he looked like this. Well, I don't have that picture, but it's a service picture widely circulated of Steve in his uniform. It's a torso from the head up, and he's clothed. So, you know, he was, he was uh, you know, still a young man at that point, and... He was well on his way, you know, to achieving bodybuilding stardom, which is another point. If you don't have access to weights, then there's a lot of things that you can still do. Push-ups, squats, sit-ups, pull-ups, you know, if you can find a tree branch or a jungle gym of some sort. Uh, during that time, Steve got a 100-pound barbell set, and he would use that to work out with. And in fact... I was just talking to, to the, on my community page about this, which I'm going to be doing this weekend, 100-pound squats. So you put 100 pounds on a barbell, and you do 100 reps. That's what Steve was doing at that time. Uh, he would also load up his knapsack, backpack. He would load up his fellow soldiers, and he would walk or run. So there's always ways you can do things to stimulate growth. Lifestyle. Even bodybuilding aside, Steve lived the model healthy life. He worked all his child and adulthood on a ranch. He ate all natural foods and was always exposed to the Montana fresh air and sun, as well as California fresh air and sun. A note about his teenage years. They moved to Oakland, he and his mom Goldie, and 
he, in high school, when the war was going on, Steve worked half a day. I believe this started his junior year in high school, and he did this his senior year in high school as well. So he would go to school half a day, and then he would go and work from lunch till 5.30, and he was loading pallets, and he was also working in a feed store, I'm assuming, you know, throwing around heavy bags of feed. And then at 5.30, he would go to Ed Yarick's gym in Oakland and work out with Ed. So, you know, I was just having this conversation with my 16-year-old son. I have four boys. And explaining to my 16-year-old, it just comes down to how badly you want it. Um, so, you know, you look at guys like this and you emulate what they're doing and use that as your own template. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? As well as engaging in many other exercises and pioneering the concept of power walking. He never smoked. He rarely drank. He even turned down roles in certain Western films, some of which then went to Clint Eastwood, expressing his disapproval for the character cigar smoking as he did not want to promote unhealthy habits. Steve has only ever been for healthy, natural ways in all areas of his life, translating to his body. That's true, and that's why I believe he would never put anything in his body that wasn't natural. Uh, he had integrity, he had honesty, he wanted to do things the right way. He lived in Muscle House by the sea, and the woman who owned Muscle House was Joy, and Joy was strict. She did not allow junk food in her house, of course, no cursing, no smoking. Uh, Joy was very much into fitness. Joy was very much into As a Man Thinketh, the great book by James Allen. Joy had a huge impact on Steve. And I thought I think that this is where Steve really started to formulate in his mind that if you can believe it, and if you can conceive it, believe it, you can achieve it. Steve said many times that he didn't know building muscle was hard. So therefore, it wasn't because nobody ever told him, hey, you can't gain 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. Uh, he used the power of the mind. So you younger guys, I would highly recommend you read books uh, on, on that type of thing um, by James Allen, by Joe Vitale, and, uh, you know, Think and Grow Rich. That's another awesome book that you can find. Word. I trust Steve Reeves Word when he says he never took steroids. He has always been outspoken against the use. Very true. And he urged the same from Arnold in this letter to him. Uh, there is a open letter to Arnold Schwarzenegger by Steve Reeves, and you can find it online. Just Google it. Dear Arnold, as you are well aware, the state of bodybuilding is in crisis. Competitors are killing themselves with drugs. So this must have been written in the 90s. You know, Steve died in 2000. So even 30 years ago, 34 years ago, Steve was very shocked, you know, and disturbed by how bodybuilding was going at that time. Unfortunately, nobody listened to him. Uh, however, even those from Steve's era all said that he and they themselves were natural and not one person in over 70 years ever suggested otherwise. Very true. No evidence. So far, we have been ignoring the fact that there's not one single piece of evidence to indicate or even hint that Steve Reeves did take any form of steroids ever. Reasons against Steve Reeves being natural. He looks better than me. <laughs> I hear you, Lorenzo. Some crap was synthesized in a lab in the 30s, so it isn't a chronological impossibility that he took something, even though none of the general public would have had any knowledge about the muscle building effects of steroids or any reason for using that stuff, let alone a farm boy. Well, if you guys aren't following um, Barbell Films on social media, Instagram, he uh, posts a lot of pictures of men and women, uh, I think the late 1800s, early 1900s, who look amazing. 
So, you know, steroids weren't around in the late 1800s. They weren't around in 1910. So they looked fantastic. Um, George Hackenschmidt is another example. He looked fantastic. Eugene Sandow looked fantastic. Nobody's accusing those guys of using steroids. This is the case of someone with God-given genetics and a healthy lifestyle. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. And then someone below Icicle Storm says, Steve Reeves was not a farm boy. He was a Hollywood actor. And we already covered that. Steve was born and grew up on a ranch. These are the comments on this Reddit thread that Lorenzo posted. Steve was born and grew up on a ranch, began training at roughly 15 or 16 years old. I've seen different ages. I've seen 15, I've seen 16, so somewhere in there. Won the Mr. America at 21 and the Mr. Universe at 23. He won the Mr. Universe in 1950. He was born in 1926. So he was 24 when he won the Mr. Universe. His birthday's in January. The Mr. Universe was held later in the year. So he was 24 when he won the Mr. Universe. He landed his first main Hollywood role with Hercules at age 32. And then Unix Hacker, this is great. I have been waiting for someone to tackle this in detail for a while. Kudos. And then Steve Reeves was Peak Natty. And then Sitting Pipe says, I admire Reeves and all the Silver Era guys. I have researched this for years. That's fantastic. Here's what I think. I think he was natural, and later it was methyl testosterone. I believe that's uh, T-ball. By Oregon. <laughs> I think that spelling is incorrect. 25 milligram. They also used methamphetamines, trade name Syndrox, all legal as Lily also made a liquid form called amphandroxin hydrochloride. I admire Steve Reeves and all the Silver Era guys. I've researched this for years. I just read that. There are letters from John Grimmick about this and a video on it. And a little more info on John Grimmick. I still have found nothing to suggest Steve Reeves himself has taken anything. And then the OG Ziz, Aesthetic God. Well, here they go. I, th I thought that was a fascinating thread. Thank you, Lorenzo, for that. Here's the pictures again that Lorenzo references. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, it's kind of like beating a dead horse with the steroid talk. It's going to continue. So I guess we need to beat it back, you know, with... Um, you know, just pitching in and, and sharing what our thoughts are here. Lastly, there you go. There it is. The Steve Reeves Retreat, May 16th through the 18th. You can check the link in the video if you don't know what I'm talking about. It is a golden era gathering that I'm hosting in May of this year. Three days as of today until the... Um, early bird discount goes away. We're going to have a blast. Thank you again for that, Lorenzo. I really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.